So, intervals. Now, here is uh, a property of uh, intervals which is very important. So, let us take a, uh, I think he said do not use red because it looks bad in the, uh, okay. so let us uh, take a green one. So, this is the line, real line. So, let us take a point on the line. So, this is a point P, right. I want to locate that point P. Where is that point? P is a point on the geometric object namely the line. Okay? I want to pinpoint where is that point. Imagine as if there is a big road right, going from one end to another right, in a desert, there is no sign or of anything anywhere around and there is a somebody stranded on the road and he sends a message that locate me, find me or help me. So, how will you locate that point? So, here is a possibility, right. Let us draw some point on the line, some object, right, some city. So, try to see whether the person is on the left. So, person is able to answer you yes or no. Are you on the left side of that city or the right side of it. So, then our, if it is not on this side, then our search becomes only on that part. So, I can go on doing that, right. A better way would be, let us take an interval. Are you between this city and that city? Have you crossed that city? Have you reached that city? So, no. So, you are in between that city. Right now, I want to narrow down the search, so I'll make the it smaller and make it smaller. So search, search window smaller and smaller. So eventually, I should be able to pinpoint that point. Where is that person? Is that okay? So this we want to formalize mathematically. Okay. So, let us write down uh, the statement and then try to prove it. So, here is let us take a sequence i n of intervals. So, keep that picture in mind now. At the nth stage, you have got this interval a n to b n okay. and we say it is nested if the next one is inside this. We want to make it shorter, right? the next interval is inside locating. So, with the property that i n is a subset of i n plus 1, right. Is it okay saying that this is saying i n is inside, i n is bigger, i n plus 1 is, is it right or wrong? Which way? Have I written it rightly or wrongly? i n plus 1 should be smaller. So, this is written wrong, right. There is a typo in this, yes. So, this this one should be i n plus 1 should be inside i n. I want to say that, right. The picture i n, i n plus 1, smaller part of it. So, this is wrong here. And what should happen in that picture? I want to make it smaller and smaller. So, how do you say that really they are becoming smaller and smaller? Eventually, they should capture that point. That means, the sequence a n that is the right end points, left end points b n, the difference of the two should go to 0. The length of the interval right, should go to 0. What is the length of the interval i n? b n minus a n that should go to 0. So, I want to prove. So, let us write here this is called nested interval property. So, i n is a sequence of closed 
bounded intervals i n equal to a n comma b n for every n bigger than i equal to such that one i n plus one is a subset of i n for every n right second limit b n minus a n n going to infinity is equal to 0 right the intervals are becoming smaller and smaller that is captured by saying this is 0. So, this implies eventually what do you expect I should capture that point and only that point right. So, it says intersection of i n s 1 to infinity is a single turn point x for some x belonging to r is a nested sequence means next one is inside the previous one right that is why we say it is a nested interval property is a sequence of intervals which is nested right next one is inside the previous one and they are becoming smaller and smaller. So, saying that the length is going to 0 and one more property very important that they are each i n is a close bounded interval. Otherwise, you cannot say b n minus a n is going to 0 anyway. If any one of the i n is unbounded then you cannot say that right length will be infinity it will be bigger than anything. So, it cannot go. So, uh, either I should prove ok let us prove this first and then say why all these conditions are required ok. See whenever you prove a theorem under some conditions you try to see whether any one of the conditions can be dropped or not you can remove that condition from the theorem or not because if you can remove it then your result you have got a much stronger result at your hands without that condition also right. So, uh, i n is a sequence. So, let us uh, try to understand the proof. So, this is uh, a n and this is b n here is right. So, where is a n plus 1? So, here will be a n plus 1 and possibly here will be b n plus 1 because it is nested it is the nested sequence right. So, now look at the left hand points a n s it is a sequence of points what can you say about that sequence is monotonically increasing what about sequence b n s are both bounded. So, they must converge. So, first observation the left hand points must converge the right hand points must converge. So, limit a n n going to infinity equal to a exists that is the first step because a n is a monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above and limit n going to infinity b n equal to b exists because of the property every monotonically monoton sequence which is bounded must converge. What is the relation between A and B? Claim A is less than or equal to B. Is that ok? A is less than or equal to B. Is that ok for everybody? Because A n is less than B n right. So, or look at each A n is less than B n and B n is decreasing. So, B n's are upper bounds for the sequence a n right. So, the limit of that that is a. So, a must be less than or equal to b ok right. Now, the question is can I say is it possible a is strictly less than b 
is it possible that A is strictly less than B? See, saying that limit of A and Z exists, limit of B and Z exists, we have used the property that is sequence is nested. That property has been used once nested. If we want to say that if A is strictly less than B, that means what? If A is strictly less than B, then, then what? All that does not help actually. That means, the limit of A n and limit of B n has got a length in between. Is that possible? Because length of B n minus A n. So, limit of B n minus limit of A n, what is that limit? Limit of A n is A, limit of B n is B and that is going to 0. The property says limit of So, this property says A cannot be strictly less than B, right. So, A is equal to B. So, that much is because of 2. So, implies, so where is, so A implies A is equal to B, right. Now, can I say this number, so claim can I say this number, uh, call it, if you want to call, call it as x now, a is equal to b, call it as x or keep it a and b, that this number x belongs to i n for every n, that belongs to each one of the intervals, because where is x? It is less than, it is bigger than a n, less than b n, right? Is it okay? Because it is a limit of a n's and limit of b n. So, this must be inside a i n a less than right. Is it ok? Uh, x is a n less than x less than b n for every n claim this is ok. So, this implies right is that ok? I am just uh, writing a weaker statement because that is true. So, implies x belongs to x belongs to i n. Claim, can I say x belongs to the intersection i n? It belongs to each i n, so it must belong to intersection, right? So, implies singleton x is a subset of the intersection i n. Now, question is, can I say it is equal to? I want to say it is equal to. How can I say that this is equal to intersection i n? If not, the simplest way of doing this, is if not, then suppose there are two points, x and y both in, then what will happen? So, length of i n will be bigger than y minus x, right? both are inside i n. So, length cannot go to 0 then. If x and y x not equal to y are inside i n, then what will be the length of i n? It will be bigger than or equal to y minus x, which cannot go to 0, it is a number. So, that is not possible again because length goes to 0. So, this is ok. Now, my question is we have used nested property, we have used the property that uh, what else we have used, nested property we have used and then property 2 length going to 0 we have used, where have we used the fact that they are closed intervals, where did we use the fact that each i n is a closed interval. In this proof, can you spot somewhere some line which I should have justified, I did not. There must have been somewhere, huh? otherwise I can remove that condition that i n's are closed intervals. I could just say i n's are nested sequence length going to 0 should be happy, a and b are 
what are a and, a and b are so you are uh, you intend to say that here right but i use property 2 here namely the length is going to zero yeah so in this proof where i have used the fact that closed what you are trying to say is i can give you a counter example where for open it will not be true right but i am saying in this proof see that is how we should try to understand in what line of this arguments did i use the fact that ins are closed intervals till now saying ans are increasing that is nested property bns are decreasing that is nested property right bounded intervals are bounded so both sequences are bounded so convergent no problem right and because an is less than or equal to bn so limit a will be less than or equal to b that is okay that is property of limits right so we are saying if possible a is less than b that is okay because if a is less than b then what happens we said x will be between a and bn that is okay right because ans are increasing bns are decreasing so x will be inside right but does it imply that x has to be in the interval i and b n closed interval if it is not closed would you say that x has to be in the interval a and b n right so something to think about right so try to go through the proof yourself and try to understand this is how you will understand and then remember the conditions what are the conditions what are required where in the proof we use the fact that ins are closed intervals so let me give you some example and then probably that will help you to understand so what we are saying is so this nested interval property is no longer true if ins are open intervals okay so let us look at an example of that type so let us look at in to be equal to so where is the first one 0 and 1 where is the next one 1 by 2 1 by 3 so what is the length of in length of in is 1 over n that goes to 0 so this is a nested sequence of intervals ins length going to what is the intersection of ins what do you think is the intersection of ins if you say it is 5 that means i have got a counter example indicating that in the theorem of nested interval property you see when you are in the proof when you are taking limit an is a limit bn is b then a and b need not be part of the right that is what is happening here of the intersection a and b need not be part of the intersection that is what is happening so to say that a and b when you want to say x is in a i n for every n that is a limit of a n and b and you want to say that belongs to i n then you have to have closed intervals otherwise this may not be true so that is the place there you use is that okay yes so we have proved what is called the nested interval property that means and it is a consequence of basically lub property you can say because lub property implies every monotonically increasing bounded sequence is convergent and we did not prove that but one can prove that actually that is equivalent to lub property so lub property monoton increasing and bounded convergent cauchiness all are equivalent properties if you assume one you can prove the other but we are doing only lub implies monotonically increasing and bounded is convergent monotonically uh, and we lub property implies cauchy and we also proved cauchy implies 
LUV property, right? In the way that L, we did not prove uh, Cauchy implies LUV, we only proved that every Cauchy sequence, a sequence is convergent if and only if it is Cauchy. One can prove all these are equal and we will not go. We also proved as a consequence of this what is called nested interval properties locating a point on the line, right? one can prove that this is also equivalent to LUV property, converse also. If you assume this property on a field, then it has to have LUV property. These are all slightly deep theorems in uh, construction of real numbers, we will not go into that. But as a consequence of LUV property, these properties are true. right? So, what we have done today is nothing much actually. What we have done is, we have defined uh, one the coarseness is equivalent to convergent one. Second, we defined what is an interval. We try to characterize what are intervals left open, right close in the familiar geometric form and then we proved the nested interval property. Right? So, let us stop. Thank you. <laughs>